You've seen the YouTube videos of these ham radio operators using Faraday cloth blankets instead of radials for a vertical antenna when going portable. And now there are Faraday cloth strips for radials. Instead of laying down a blanket, you lay down these Faraday cloth strips. And the listen to these hams, oh, these Faraday strips, they're just amazing. It's a magic carpet ride. Do the claims of these YouTube hams really hold up to actual engineering? Well, let's discuss first the Faraday cloth blanket with RF engineer Yuri Van Doren, owner of the RF Guru Company in Belgium. His call sign is ON6URE. He manufactures antennas and ballons and other products for the amateur radio market. All right, the Faraday cloth radial myth. I think we see where this is going. Why conductive mesh is not a replacement for proper radials and stealth or portable setups Some operators experiment with conductive mesh sheets, Faraday cloth, RF shielding fabric, wire screen, laid under a vertical. The assumption is simple. It's conductive, so it must act like a ground plane or radials. Myth. A patch of conductive fabric or small wire mesh is equivalent to a radial field. Reality usually is not, and it won't magically make a vertical efficient, and here's why. Conductivity is not enough. You need the right current distribution. Radials aren't just some metal near the base. They are deliberate conductors of specific length that provide a low impedance RF return path for displacement currents at the feed point. A flat cloth or small mesh, especially if resistive, cannot support the correct current distribution needed to act as an effective counterpoise. Size matters a lot. Controlled experiments show the radius of the conductive region strongly impacts ground loss. On 40 meters, even a 2 meter radius mesh is only a modest help. Losses remain high unless the radial field or screen extends to roughly one-eighth or one-quarter wavelength. Here's an example. A 1.5 meter square copper mesh under a 40 meter vertical is better than nothing, but the return currents extend well beyond that footprint. The cloth becomes a lossy patch, not a low-loss mirror. So let's uh, scroll down to the Uh, bottom line here. Don't get trapped by the cloth. A small conductive patch does not equal a radial field. Verticals need a capacitive return over the region where currents flow. That's what radials provide. If you're going to put in effort, build real radials. Even two to four elevated quarter wave radials outperform any Faraday cloth pad. If you must use fabric, cut it into strips and deploy them as radials. Now, we're going to get to that now. All right, Faraday strips, 23% of nothing is still nothing. I think we see where this is going. It's true, wide Faraday strip radials are more efficient than plain wire radials and easier to deploy. No tangles, no knots, just roll them out. They also have lower resistance and slightly better capacitive capacitive coupling to the soil, but they take up more space, add weight, and the claim performance numbers sound far more impressive than they really are. What does an increase of 23 to 28% relative field strength actually mean? Field strength is an electric field amplitude. When a manufacturer says 23 to 28% increase in field strength, that's an increase in amplitude, not power. Now, to convert that into something meaningful, we use 20 times the log base of 10. So, with a 23% increase in amplitude, that gives us 1.8 dB, 28% plus 2.14 dB. 
Now, since the product description explicitly says relative field strength, the fair reading is amplitude, about 1.8 to 2.1 dB, or roughly one-third of an S unit on most radios. If you interpret it as power, it's half that. Either way, it is a small change. Four wide strips can beat four wires. And a 2 dB improvement is plausible, especially in close-in field tests over average soil. But that's still a modest bump, not a game changer. It still won't touch a real radial field. For ground-mounted verticals, efficiency is dictated mostly by ground loss. The big win isn't in making the radials wider, it's in having more radials. <laughs> Let's jump down to here. Going from 4 to 32 radials can claw back nearly 5 dB on 40 meters. Now that is an order of magnitude more improvement than the 2 dB you might get from using four Faraday strips. Classic broadcast and Rudy Severin's data agree quantity beats width every time with diminishing returns beyond a few dozen radials. Portable or emergency setups, what actually helps? More short wires, fewer wide strips. Carry a roll of lightweight wire and lay down eight to 16 radials instead of four heavy straps. With limited radials, shorter and more numerous is usually better than longer and fewer. Elevated tune radials. If you can lift them above ground and tune for resonance, four radials can rival the performance of a dense on-ground field, the best dB per kilogram solution for portable ops. All right, let's get to the bottom line here. Does strip width ever hurt performance? Only if it changes tuning dramatically. Otherwise, no, wider conductor is mainly lower resistance. Is plus 2 dB audible? Barely. It's measurable in lab gear, but often masked by fading or band noise. Should I buy them for field use? If convenience matters more than weight or price, sure. But don't expect miracles. Also, consider the cost of these radial strips, $130. Now, you can buy a lot of wire for that much money. And as we've just seen, wire is more effective when you lay down enough. Kind of like buying a box of cereal that says new and improved. Is that brand of cereal really significantly better now? Probably tastes pretty much the same. So, Faraday cloth for a ground plane? Not a magic carpet ride. Consider subscribing to this channel. Ring the bell for updates in 73.